Bhagavan recommends going through that work. Allam Undre, all is one. I had forwarded that as a link in our group in the beginning. Now in that, the word Kadavul is analyzed by the author who is unknown. That Kadavul, Kadand Irupavar. Yellam Kadand Irupavar or the one who transcends everything that can be seen, known or exists separately. <coughs> The transcendental being, Kadand Nirpavan Kadavul. The immanence of God allows us to know God somewhat. If God were not to be immanent in us, we would not be able to relatively know Him if He is merely transcendent. Since He is also immanent within us, that allows us the sadhana, the ability to gradually come to the truth of God as the transcendental being, the immanence allows one to come through the various practices, the various bhakti marga, karma marga, yoga marga, and also all these amount to tapas. And with the tapo valime, the, the strength of tapas, it allows one to investigate further and make the leaps required <coughs> to identify with the ultimate, the Kadand Nirkum Kadavul. So, that is the word Kadavul that is used here. Kanu Tanai Vitt Tan Kadavulai Kanal Kanu Mano Mayama Kakshi. That is the first phrase we are going to see. Kanu Tanai Vitt Tan Kadavulai Kanal Kanu Mano Mayama Kakshi. Where <coughs> setting aside the necessary investigation into who the seer is, who I am, when one says that one is having the darshan of God, then one should take that that is only a Mano Maya Kakshi. That is a projection of the mind. Kanu Tanai Vitti Tan Kadavulai Kanu Kanu Mano Mayama Kakshi. So the Vevaharika, whatever we are seeing, when we take that to be real, it helps to understand we are not seeing the reality of God. Though we are seeing God only, Ashtamurti Brit Deva Poojanam. Whatever we see, we are seeing God, but not as the reality, not as the true nature of the Supreme Being. But in a way that the Supreme Being allows us in our inability mm -hmm. to see Him and progress <clears throat> towards the transcendental truth through the immanence itself. So, Kanu Tanai Vitt, leaving aside the necessity to turn attention on oneself and know oneself, when one says that one knows God or one sees God or one sees the existence of God apart, then take it that that is only a Manomaya Kakshi. It is a projection of the mind. Kanum Manomaya Maam Kakshi. Tane Kanumavan Tan Kadavul Kandanam. Only the one who sees oneself. Tane Kanumavan Tan Kadavul Kandanam. Only the one, so as a lead in from the first, the meaning of the first phrase, then what it is to see God necessarily, one has to see oneself. Tanai Kanum Avan Tan Kadavul Kandanam. Only the one who sees himself can be said to have seen really the Supreme Being. Then the last part is what is it that happens when one makes this attempt to know oneself? 
தன் முதலை தான் முதல் போய் தான் கடவுள் அன்று இல்லதா வென் தி சுப்ரீம் பீங் தி டிரான்சென்டல் ஒன் தி ஒன் ஹூ கெனாட் பி இமேஜின் தி ஒன் ஹூ கெனாட் பி தாட் ஆஃப் தி ஒன் ஹூ கெனாட் பி சீன் தி ஒன் ஹூ கெனாட் பி சென்சரிலி டச் இன் எனி வே that one can be seen within inverted commas how tan mudalai tan mudal poi the first thought the i thought has to be dismantled <coughs> tan mudalai tan mudal poi what is that mudal for me when my relative mudal the identification with body as i when that is dismantled what is the true aadhara that which cannot be dismantled remains bhagwan says <coughs> to one a devotee is a bit afraid to come to bhagwan directly for whatever reasons of the jnana marga and he decides to meet uh seshadri swami first before coming to bhagwan and he expresses why he has come to sashadri swamigal first swami ji in fact i wanted to have the upadesham and darshan from ramana bhagavan but i am afraid of this jnana marga and sashadri swamigal says what is there to be afraid <clears throat> with the consciousness whatever that can be removed or dropped has to be removed or dropped and that which cannot be removed or dropped will remain that is you that is the supreme truth that is all there is in jnana says and having gained the necessary strength that devotee goes up and meets bhagwan and immediately narrates what happened in the presence of seshadri swamigal that seshadri swamigal said that jnana is nothing to be afraid of it is just with the jnana with the arib whatever that can be dropped has to be dropped therefore that which cannot be dropped will remain and that is the transcendental being the truth of you the truth of god and truth of the world bhagwan says things could not have been put better than this the jnana marga could not be put better than this of course that gives the philip the necessary support to the sadhaka to go ahead and pursue the path of vichara and jnana tan mudalai tan mudal poi all the dismantleable stuff is dependent on the ahankar the i so to dismantle the i one necessarily has to dismantle the other things which is implied it is not necessarily described each time but when one goes to the root of the i all that has to be dropped has to be dropped has to be freed off then that which cannot be dropped the transcendental being reveals itself tan mudalai tan mudal poi tan kadavul andri ilada when that tan <coughs> drops everything that can be dropped then that itself is the transcendental being one self itself is the transcendental being that which can <coughs> not be dropped or got away from or got into union with so that is the whole verse the three parts of it let's quickly recapture and sum it up before going into some areas that are important Uh, as described in the verse so the kaanu thanai vittu taan kadavulai kaanal kaanu manomayama kaakshi so when one instead of turning the attention on oneself and enquiring who am i when one turns that attention outward on the other forgetting the existence of the self when one sees something else and says that one has had darshan of god then <clears throat> one 
is having only the darshan of one's own mental projection. Kaanum manomayamam kaachi tanai. Tanai kaanum avan taan kadavul kandanam. Then who is it that can be said to have seen the transcendental one? Only the one who has seen oneself can be said to have seen the transcendental one. And what happens exactly when the transcendental one reveals itself? Tan mudalai, tan mudal poi, tan kadavul andri iladal. The true source reveals itself when one drops the first thought, the I thought, the mudal ennam. Tan mudalai, tan mudal poi. Then the tan itself the seeking consciousness itself learns that in it was present the thought all the time. But now the thought rises and shines in all its glory and purity as I, 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 I. Bhagavan says, Ahami Nasha Bhaji, Aham Aham Taya Sprati Hritsvayam Paramapurnasa. When the I thought is demolished, is dismantled, is completely destroyed, then the transcendental being reveals itself as oneself. The seeker identifying with the transcendental being, with that Sayujya, is able to understand the truth of the world, oneself, and the Kadavul that one was seeking apart. That is the verse that we are we have been blessed with by Bhagavan. We are going to see two more verses on Kadavul, on God. Of course, this whole journey, if we recall, had started with Eppayare Tevuruvil Yetinum, Appayaruvil Appurulai Kanvadiyadu Ayinum, Ammai Purulin Unmayil Tan Unmayai Oorndu Odundi Ondradale Unmayil Kana. What is the true darshan of God? is to seek one's own truth in the truth, in the ever-existing truth of the transcendental one, to seek one's own truth and to merge, to identify and be one with that truth. He is real seeing, says Bhagavan. He does not directly jump to verse number 20 from 8. He gives us some Jnana Marga concepts. He worships the Supreme, so to say, <coughs> by giving us some supports. He divides the consciousness into <coughs> dualities and triads. All the dualities and triads arise existing or existing arising dependent on one. Now, that one is uniformly said by all Ramana commentators like Lakshman Sharmadhi, mm -hmm. like Kanakamal, as Ahankar. One should not forget that, that Ahankar itself is the usually worshipped God when it is at the source of everything. <clears throat> it is the worshipped God, the, the first I is the usual, what we give name as, what we give a name to and worship. So, the enquiry into Arivu Ariyame, which happens in the 9th verse to 13, 9, uh, no, sorry, 10, 11, 12, and 13, the four verses, they are, they take us to uh, the source of Arivu Ariyame. Of course, in between, Bhagavan would have said that the Arivu that we know is also Ariyame because it is based on the Ahankara or the root ignorance of not knowing who one is. So, and Kanakamal brings that very beautifully. She says that even in Ariyamai, there is Arivu. She puts the opposite. Like when I say that I can see in this, in this uh, <coughs> cone, I can see up to the end of that wall, and I cannot see from here that I can say that from here onwards, the sight is not there. What Kanakamal brings to light is that if you say knowledge is there here, then 
when i say i do not know just as when we say i do not know what was present in deep sleep that i do not know is that knowledge which is present in the area which she says <laughs> even in the not knowing unless you have some knowledge you cannot say i do not know when i say i do not know anything about our internal organ systems which a normal doctor would learn that is knowledge in one sense because to say i do not know i sh there should be some knowledge inside that ignorance she says <coughs> so she turns around that <coughs> if you say this has knowledge then that too has knowledge but bhagwan turns that around once again flips it around by saying that knowledge and that ignorance are arising dependent on the root ignorance of not knowing who one is therefore both are ariyame <coughs> but then he brings us to jnanamam tane me nanamam jnana madhyanam and from there the verse on first person tanmay unde munnilai padrtega taamulava let us hold a little bit in that tanmay unde munnilai padrtega taamulava two aspects i would like to bring out from that verse where the uh, enquiry by philosophers and psychologists stops and where bhagwan takes the leap and we have to take the leap with him <coughs> that is one thing let us go into that that there is this uh, philosophy of hegel the in the uh, early part of 1800s which discusses about the self which discusses about the relative self and it is quite interesting because he finds that <coughs> every consciousness is at the bottom self consciousness every consciousness is at the bottom self consciousness and <clears throat> our aim is to realize that this is of course the the problem is he stops with the human consciousness alone this is not the real absolute consciousness though he calls it absolute consciousness but it is interesting to know how he has come so that we can understand the depth of and the gravity uh, of bhagwan's teachings and how in simple words he has made us make anuman like leaps across the field of consciousness the hegelian theory is very interesting to see it's not theory it's really practical he says that see the the self consciousness uh we we come to know let us say to begin with when we are hungry when the stomach is grum, growling or grumbling we get to know that self awareness is there one is dragged there but the moment one goes and has a nice meal then that fullness is there then once again that consciousness that one is existing it is lost <clears throat> that is the problem with desire and desire fulfillment in any mode this is from there he says and therefore he jumps from there to say that one should be always self conscious and in that inner fullness he should investigate the relationship with world then understand that the victory over another is not self consciousness the victory over another is also desire and desire fulfillment but to see that even when one is dealing with another when is conversing with another one is in relationship with another that happens in the space of self consciousness one need not leave the self recognition he uses the word recognition mm -hmm. but where does it <clears throat> where does it come as a stop and where does bhagwan take the leap is that when it comes to deep sleep when it comes to deep sleep the philosopher stops that uh, that we are not there but the world and others are there that is where he stops and that is where bhagwan takes the leap further that <clears throat> in deep sleep we are there and the world and others and our own body is not there that is a critical point to note 
that that tanmay which bhagwan uses the i which bhagwan uses for us to cross and we have to cross with him as bhagwan says in aksharamanam male jamaliyil keda nanen nurubiya nadinen uruve arunachala arunachala is the ever existing i am we are going to see that in a bit from the talks but how do we get there from our relative consciousness of being worried about whether we will get the insurance payment for the hospital bill or not that is our worry from there where do we get to the uh, abiding in that self which has no such worries <coughs> bhagwan says that when the same question is asked to bhagwan when a foreigner comes and says in our sleep others were existing bhagwan says and this is the critical jump which we have to assimilate and jump the foreign philosophers where do they stop the western philosophers they stop that in our deep sleep we may or may not have been there but the world and others are there and bhagwan makes an observation which we have to meditate internalize and assimilate and understand what crossing we are going to do when we hold the i bhagwan says in two three different talks he says this he says <clears throat> when somebody says in my sleep the world was there and others were present and bhagwan gives the the brahmastram in in a, in a form understandable to us he says did they come in your sleep and give you evidence or when did they come and give you evidence only after your consciousness became superfluous as to be caught up in the waking state <clears throat> not when it could go into deep sleep state but only the waking state people come and say you went to sleep but we were mm-hmm. all there they are not sufficient evidence and that is confirmed to us by those devotees who get the god darshan in in dreams from deep sleep <clears throat> that and their entire life is transformed i have shared the experience of my better half there that she had this darshan of bhagwan in their puja room while in tirunamale while we were we had gone to she had gone for a nap in the afternoon and she got the darshan of bhagwan in the deep sleep now from that moment on her entire spiritual journey was transformed that means the, and bhagwan says we we the i thought when we hold it and go we cross those states of consciousness where god is said to exist in all our sleeping state god is awake god is one who is always awake so the guru who is one with the ishwar is able to come and give us darshan in the deep sleep and awaken us in our spiritual journey now bhagwan's i it makes the journey through the deep sleep to beyond whereas the philosophers i it doesn't know that it exists even in deep sleep therefore there is whole lot of discussion with what is the relationship between us and others what is the relationship between <coughs> one self conscious being and other self conscious being they come to the compromise that one should recognize that one is really seeking one's own recognition and extend it to others that they are also not make a slave of another and feel one has won over that never gives atma tripti the atma tripti according to the philosopher comes when one knows that one is really seeking a recognition of self consciousness and extend that to every being that they are also seeking only recognition they are not seeking food food or some fame or the applause or anything they are also seeking only self recognition then he says there is phenomenality of spirit that the spirit is pervading all human beings therefore it is common to all that is how he comes to a conclusion but that limits that consciousness in some sense to humans alone whereas <clears throat> the consciousness doesn't have such conditionalities in enquiry and that is where bhagwan takes us that that whole journey of discussion between relationship with food 
relationship with others, how to maintain self-consciousness. In one shloka, Bhagavan, that is the second point, Tanmai undel munnilai padarkaigal thamulavam. Am I seeking satisfaction from my work? Am I seeking satisfaction from a relationship? All these are not inquired into in that, in that verse. The root is taken as only when the I arises, the second person, third person <coughs> arise. When the first person subsides, inquires into his truth and subsides, the second and third person vanish and the self alone is, is that verse. Then the inquiry into uh, time starts in, in the present moment itself, inquiry into the truth of the self. So, <clears throat> the, uh, there are some statements in some branches of Buddhism where they say moment by moment awareness, moment by moment happiness. Now, even moment by moment awareness or moment by moment happiness is not made uh, as the final goal by Bhagavan. Bhagavan says even in the present moment, inquire into the truth of the self. The self does not seek fulfillment or recognition from the present moment. It seeks fulfillment by self-attention, knowing that it does not need the existence of a second being for its fulfillment. It just needs recognition. It ne just needs self-attention. Am I not there? Have I vanished? I am always present. All consciousness is self-consciousness, says Bhagavan. That is where somewhat the philosopher also comes. But then the enquiry stops far short where Bhagavan's enquiry takes us to the absolute self. <clears throat> then in verse number, the verse number 16, we find about uh, time and space into both. We don't, we don't find any satisfaction by going from here to somewhere else or from there to somewhere else because the satisfaction is always in the ever-present self. Then from there, we go on to what is this body? We saw Vishwarupa Darshana. Even in Vishwarupa Darshana, there is no real satisfaction, says Bhagavan. And he puts the question, how can Arjuna be apart from Vishwarupa Darshana? How can you call it as Vishwarupa Darshana if somebody is apart from it and seeing it? That is how Bhagavan says, there also, Tannaitan Karnal, Talevan Tanit, sorry, Karnam Tanaitan Tan Kadavulai Karnal. Arjuna, living himself, saying that I am having Vishwarupa Darshana, he is a Manomaya Kachi. That is why Krishna says, see whatever you desire to see. Whatever you can project, you can see with the Divya Chakshu. Whereas the real darshan is to inquire into one's own truth. We, we had a book reading in between those two weeks and we had Krishna Premi asking Bhagavan, what is your form? And there was another theosophist to whom also Bhagavan gives the <coughs> complete absence of form and then reforms himself as Dakshinamurti and then as Bhagavan. But that is also not real darshan, says Bhagavan. To see the formlessness in front, who sees the blank? Who sees the Vishwarupa darshana? Kaanam tanevittu taan kadavulai kaanam kaanam manomaya maam kaatshi. It is still a manomaya kaatshi, says Bhagavan. And he brings us to vidhimadi. Vidhimadi moola viveka milarke vidhimadi vellum vivaram. Even the concepts of fate and free will, even the prarabdha, is not present in the self-luminous self. In the Avai Tanaranda, one is abiding in the self-luminous self, one is content in the ever-present recognition of one's self-luminous existence, then there is no question of second, there is no vidhi, there is no madhi. Avai Tanaranda, Saharvaro Pinnamavai Saat. Will they ever get into thoughts about vidhi or madhi? Not at all, says Bhagavan. That's how he has brought us to this verse. Kaanam Tanevittu Taan Kadavulai Kaanam Even if you see Kadavul as Prarabdha Now who is seeing it? We have to ask that Kaanam Manomayamam Kachitani Kaanam Avan Taan Kadavul Kandana Tan Mudalai Taan Mudalpoi Taan Kadavul Andri Iladal Let us see some of Bhagavan's statements in the talks about the definition of God that will help us to abide. So the two points about where exactly Bhagavan takes the leap from 
where the psychologists and philosophers they hesitate to go beyond that and how holding the eye one can cross that one can cross that area all the lokas present in dream and deep sleep the philosophers don't enquire into but bhagwan crosses that by saying that you are present in waking dream and deep sleep so hold that i <clears throat> i that holding that i will remove the root i and reveal the ever present self says bhagwan now let us see some of the uh, talks which give us uh, the essence of this verse as to who exactly kadavul uh, is according to bhagwan talk 106 i am starting with swami yogananda with four others arrived at 8:45 am he looks big but gentle and well groomed he has dark flowing hair hanging over his shoulders the group had lunch in the ashram mr c r right his secretary asked how shall i realize god so he obviously must be a born christian so bhagwan uses the uh, terminologies from bible but then puts an interesting uh, question tag also there for us to hold on see her right his secretary asks how shall i realize god bhagwan god is an unknown entity moreover he is external whereas the self is always with you and it is you why do you leave out what is intimate and go in for what is external so kanu tane kan is what bhagwan says what is the self again says what is this self again says see are right on our behalf and bhagwan gives the answer about god the self is known to everyone but not clearly so that fragrance is there but the actuality or reality of the self is not known <clears throat> the self is known to everyone but not clearly you always exist the being is the self i am is the name of god of all the definitions of god none is indeed so well put as the biblical statement i am that i am in exodus chapter 3 so when moses asks uh, the voice as to uh, what he should tell his co travelers whom he is leading to israel from egypt what should i tell them whom should i tell have uh, has engaged me in all these instructions and god is supposed to have told told that i am that i am that i am the ulla purul i am the ever existent one <clears throat> there are other statements like brahma iva aham aham brahmasmi soham but none is so direct as jehova jehova i am that's that's quite a quite a strong statement from bhagwan but one can always take it that it is to improve the faith of the christian but we have to take uh, the the tag for us is that uh, the root is ulla purul the ever existent one and one has to trace it only with one's own ulla unarve for which one does not need support from a second the that ulla self consciousness as hegel puts it that every consciousness is at the bottom self consciousness is this but he says he is far short of the self <clears throat> but anyway we can see that discussion as to how one cannot get tripti from the food cycle from the dress cycle or whatever whatever desire and desire fulfillment cycle is there including the necessity to boss over another that is never going to give the self recognition says hegel it has to be seen that in every consciousness at the bottom all those is only the self consciousness but then that self consciousness which he says is limited to the human beings human self he doesn't include the uh, the others but then we all know that uh, bhagwan includes everything and transcends <coughs> there are other statements such as brahmaivaham aham brahmasmi soham but none is so direct as the name jehova i am the absolute being is what is it is the self it is god knowing the self god is known in fact god is none other than this self that is one then in 112 brunton he says <coughs> brunton wants to say that in the upadesha manjari 
it is said that the world jiva and god are unreal and brenton is taken aback should we not change that somewhat uh, that instead of god we should use something else that <coughs> creative force or personal god and all that <laughs> bhagwan explained that god means samashti all that is plus being in the same way as i means the individual plus being the world means variety plus being the being is in all cases real the all the variety and the individual in each case is unreal so also in the union of the real and the unreal the mixing up of the false identification is wrong it amounts to sat asat vilakshana transcending the real and the unreal sat and asat reality is that which transcends all concepts including that of god in as much as the name of god is used it cannot be true the hebrew word jehova i am expresses god correctly absolute being is beyond expression at the cost of repetition and sounding quite uh, like a rote <clears throat> i would like to repeat the paragraph in talk 244 so that uh, it is driven home that one has to see god by removing the root i tan mudalai tan mudal poi i return to the maharani uh, the maharani says god is in all in all the objects we see around us they say we should see god in all of them so how to see god in all the objects around us i have repeated it uh, so many times but the i i is finally going to repeat itself and consume us it is going to be ever blissful that is that is our reality even the going to be is false it is ever present therefore uh, only objectively the repetition is there subjectively it is the all consuming glory of bliss so i repeat it <coughs> maharishi says god is in all and in this sea where else can god be seen he cannot be found outside he should be found within to see the objects mind is necessary to conceive god in them is a mental operation that's what bhagwan says tan tane vittu tan kadavule kaanal kaanum manomayamam kaachi it's only a mental operation but that is not real the consciousness within purged of the mind is felt as god the consciousness within purged of all non self and dismantled of the first thought i that is felt as the sayujya padavi as the oneness with the self that is god says bhagwan in verse 20 so let us sit in practice till 8 o'clock where akka will bring bring us to the same uh, summary in her own uh, delectable way so 15 minutes of practice of what bhagwan teaches
Ramaka. Namo Ramana. Prostrations to Ramana, shining as a self in all beings. By the immense grace of the self, manifest as Ramana, we are being taken back to that very self. The Ramana, who we see as God, who we say is Bhagavan himself, he says to us, if you see me without seeing your own true nature, then what you are seeing is not my true nature. It, it is only what you are seeing. It is only your mind's perception. And therefore, we have Professor K. Swaminathan and Sri Arnatrajan in their numerous discussions, which in a way might look like arguments to the onlooker also, but with the depth of affection they had for each other. And A. R. Natarajan would hold on to his concept. No, this is what Bhagavan has said. This is what Bhagavan is. Bhagavan would not be that way. And Professor Swaminathan would smile and say, Sir, sir, your Bhagavan is different from my Bhagavan. When we see with the mind, when we see with the individuality, we will find different versions. Even in the biographies of Bhagavan, we can see the same instance. In some cases, we will find the same instance recorded in letters, the same instance recorded in day by day. Or sometimes a part of the conversation, same conversation may even feature in talks. But there will be slight differences between them because of the perceiver, the presence of the perceiver while making the recording. And of course, in Ramayana, we have numerous versions of Ramayana. And each Rama is a little different from the other Rama. Each Sita is different from the other Sita. And all these Ramayanas have inspired millions of people. Each one of them have inspired millions of people to find the truth. But if you look at it, this is what it is. It is a manomaya kachi. It is a mental perception. It is seeing with the mind, says Bhagavan. And Nandakumar ji has quoted to us from the Bhagavad Gita, where Sri Krishna gave the Vishwarupa darshana to Arjuna. And before giving it, he says to him, see what you wish to see. Because that is what the universe is. And Bhagavan has told us already in Ulladinarpade that though the mind and the world appear to rise and set together, it is by the mind that the world is lit. It is the mind which creates the world for us. When the mind creates a world, in that world, God is also a picture. God is also a concept in that. And this we can understand from our own dreams also. When we have a dream, in that dream, God also exists. And where is that God but in our mind? So when we look at our dream world, we can understand that the God appearing in our dream world is perceived by our mind, is created by our mind, and is enjoyed by our mind. So, so what happens in a Manomaya Kachi? What happens when something is seen with the mind? It is subject to change. That is, it is first of all, it is limited. It is limited by the vision of the perceiver. And secondly, it is subject to change. Similarly, we find in the Bhagavad Gita, Arjuna was asked by Sri Krishna to see whatever he wishes to see. So whatever he wishes to see, he should have been very happy with that because he wished to see it. It was in accordance with his own desire that he saw the Vishwarupa. But after seeing the Vishwarupa, he is not a happy man. He is actually petrified, he is scared, he is frightened 
and he says oh janardhana oh come back to the form which is familiar to me i do not want to see this vishwarupa i am frightened by this form of yours so something which the mind creates may be pleasant or unpleasant even when it is initially desiring it but can god can the truth of god be subject to such limitations can it be changeable can it be something which makes us afraid can it be something which makes us worried that cannot be what god is so when we see god with the mind says bhagavan that is when we see god without seeing the self when we see god without going back to the source of the i without the dissolution of the i when we try to see god when we try to see god it becomes a mental perception a mental seeing and of course the mental seeing can be very beautiful it can be in the case of arjuna it might have been frightful but it can be very beautiful also but the same question was asked by bhagwan to punja ji punja ji came and asked bhagwan whether he could show krishna to him then bhagwan said who is asking this question who wants to see krishna on, on the strength of his own tapas he had it and he came back to bhagwan and he said i saw krishna and bhagwan said are you seeing him now of what use is a god who comes and goes if you see something with the mind if you see god with your mind that god will come and go even if that god is there with you throughout the waking hours throughout the dream state that perceived god cannot be there in deep sleep when the i thought itself has got dissolved who is a god who is experienced then so bhagavan asked him god cannot be one who comes and goes of what use is a god who comes and goes and punja ji was to experience the truth of this statement and then he understood when bhagwan gave him that experience and that experience came to him after he had a darshana of rama and lakshmana he saw them and he had a vision and then suddenly everything became silent so that silence he came to bhagwan why has everything gone away why has my japa also stopped and bhagwan said that is the culmination you have reached where you have to reach and then he understood and then he became aware of that experience of the glory of the self that was by bhagwan's grace by bhagwan's gracious glance that which he had been given a little earlier also the first time when he saw bhagwan also became clearer and more evident as the aadhara so bhagwan is telling us that we must get back to the truth of our own nature and then alone can we recognize the truth of god because god is something as nanda kumar ji also says that which is transcendent it transcends the perceiver hence it cannot be beheld by the limited eye of the perceiver even if it appears unlimited there will be some boundary to it so long as it is apart from the self if i see god as apart from the self then i am limiting him to that area in which i am not there i am there and god is there so where is god god is where i am not and where i am god is not if that is the kind of division that i make then am i not limiting god is it not a mental perception of god therefore bhagwan says once one sees the self then everything will be known to be included in that self including god 
in the Anma Vidya Kirtanam, Bhagavan says, if you do not know the self, there is no use knowing anything else. Tannai aridal indri pinnai yadarihilan. Nothing is known if you do not know the self. That means nothing means even God is never known until you know the self. But once you know the self, then nothing else remains to be known. Because that indeed is the true nature of God. That is what Bhagavan is telling us again and again. He is taking us back to the supremacy of self-abidance. The supremacy of self-abidance and the supremacy of self-inquiry also because one has to get back to the self through the inquiry. Here also he is indicating that when the I is dissolved, then God is known. So how does the I get dissolved? In Ramana Gita, Bhagavan says, by inquiry, the I gets dissolved. Only by inquiry, the I gets dissolved. By other means, again in Ramana Gita, he says in the chapter on self-inquiry, he says, Adbhuta Siddhaya Sadhya, you can get various Siddhis, wondrous powers, wondrous powers, including visions, you can get if you have, if you practice uh, many disciplines, spiritual disciplines. But self inquiry will take you back to self abidance. That alone will take you back to self abidance, which is all inclusive. So, Bhagavan, the self, has donned a human garb to tell us about the very limitations of the human God because Bhagavan says only then our mind will get captivated. He says, he quotes Tayu Manavar saying that when a wild deer has to be captured, a tame deer is sent. It is sent into the forest. Then the wild deer gets captivated by the tame deer and follows the tame deer out of the forest into the captivity of uh, into the captivity of the of the, the hunter or the captor in that case here it is the self itself is capturing us by taking the human form of bhagwan by giving us the walk the words which says you can have it on my authority that you, until you find the self, you won't find God. And who is telling us this? God himself is telling us this. God himself is telling us, find yourself, then alone will I be revealed to you. Until then, what you see as, as Bhagavan, what you see as the, the, the best, the magnificent, the beloved, everything, but it is seeing with the mind. And it has its limitations of changeability, bounded its boundaries, and it may disappear. It can leave us. But we do not want it to leave us. We want it to be with us always, or we want it is there always, but we have to become aware that it is always there. And that is possible only when we get back to our own true nature. And dissolving in our true nature, abide in that self which alone is the truth of God. This is what Bhagavan is telling us over here. And one more very beautiful point which was brought home in today's exposition by Nanda Kumarji was that God can be anything for us. We may take anything to be God. Whatever we feel is supreme at that point of time, we are looking at that as God. But even that we cannot understand unless we get back to the source. So that's why Bhagwan has looked at God from several perspectives before bringing us to the actual word God, Kadavul, and said, okay, whether you see God as something else or you see, try to see God as God, the answer is always the same. The answer is self-abidance. And that is his infinite grace. This repeated hammering of the truth is his 
इन्फिनिट ग्रेस ओम नमो भगवते श्री Oh, my God.